can be everywhere. Um, so I'm now going to talk about my love, which is the chalk painting process. And I'm going to talk about the steps. And then I'm going to do a demonstration while trying to stay rather clean. <laughs> um, Annie Sloan is the chalk paint that I'm going to be talking about. Um, again, she's out of the UK. This is her product. Uh, there are stockists all around the US that carry her paint. So if you um, want to see who carries your paint in your area, you go on AnnieSloan.com and you can, um, I think, pl probably plug in your zip code or something like that and find out who's selling it. Go to the store, buy a few cans. You can probably see um, some uh, color choices, which will help you make um, make your choice. She makes a lot of different colors. Um, if you don't have a stockist in your area, then you can also order it online, so it's no big deal. But you just save on shipping, obviously, if you can run and go buy it. Um, I know Annie, like I said, she's been, she's been um, emailing with me and she's super nice. A lot of people wonder what the difference between milk paint and chalk paint is. Um, my first experience was when I did those kitchen chairs that I showed you. That was with milk paint, and milk paint is a completely different beast. Milk paint comes in boxes, and it's powder-based. Um, that means you have to take your piece, you have to strip it, you have to sand it, you have to clean it. And when I say I, I really mean my husband <laughs> had to do all this. Um, and then you have to um, take your powder-based milk paint, you have to mix it with water, you have to add different colors, you have to then uh, put a adherent in it. It's actually a very involved process. Um, if you don't want to do all that, but you want to transform a piece of furniture, please use please use Annie Sloan chalk paint. Um, I don't want to upset any milk painters out there, but um, use because it's a simpler process. Literally, you open up your can of paint and you put it on your piece. You don't have to prep it. You don't have to sand it. You don't have to clean it. You don't have to get out any power tools. It's very user friendly. It's all water based. Um, there's no prep. It comes in these four cans. They're not especially cheap, but it's it's worth it. They're about 40 bucks a can. Uh, and it's a non-toxic product, which is nice. So you're not going to get a lot of fumes. Uh, she, Annie Sloan makes paint brushes. Um, this is one of them. Uh, as you can see, it's well, it's well loved, uh, but it's like a round um, brush and it's awesome. Again, they're not especially cheap. This is about 40 bucks a brush and she, she makes different sizes. If you're just starting out though, don't feel like you need to buy all the brushes. This is my handy dandy Home Depot brush I found in my basement a few years ago. <laughs> And as you can see, it's very old. Um, but start out with whatever materials that you have. It's, you can certainly use something like this. You don't have to go crazy. Um, and again, they come in different sizes. Wax brushes are a little different. They're actually, I don't want to say um, you have to have them, but this is what a wax brush looks like. It's stiffer. It's, it's round. Um, Annie Sloan doesn't make these. She act, but wherever you buy her paints, you can buy a wax brush. Um, it has a round handle, and it's really helpful. If you don't want to invest in a wax brush, you can certainly use um, cheesecloth or a rag to use your wax and spread it on. If you are going to do multiple pieces and you really fall in love with the process, this is going to make a big difference. Uh, this is the smaller wax brush, which is the dark wax brush. I kind of would suggest getting one of these. You, again, you can use a rag when applying the dark wax, which I will show you how that works. Um, but this is going to make your life a lot easier, and you're not going to get as frustrated with the process. Uh, here's some of the materials that you will need. You will notice... <laughs> 3M is up front. If you've seen my, any of my video tutorials, I got in big trouble by saying that this was the size. 3M is not the size. I know, I know, I know. 3M is actually the name of the brand. 
And I say this laughingly because a lot of people email me so that's not what, that's not the size. So I know that, it's the brand. And it's basically what you get from Home Depot. It's just a little sander. Um, I'm just checking my time. Uh, and your, your sandpaper you will need. You will need a dry brush. That's really important. This is actually not a prop, this is what I use. Um, you will need fine steel wool. Please do not get, um, get like a stiff steel wool. You will scratch your piece, you will regret it. You get the finest one they have. Um, and miscellaneous tools like a scraper. I have a kitchen spoon to clean my, stir my paints. I've sacrificed. Um, You want to pick a piece of furniture. You might not want to go with grandma's beloved coffee table because your mom might get mad that you painted it. Or you might not want to pick the most antique piece in your home because it might end up worth being worth some money in the long end and then you'll pick yourself. So find a chair, find something at a flea market or, or Goodwill. Um, please use wood, real wood. You can paint other materials, but you're gonna get less upset about the process if you use wood. It's just, when you start sanding, it's just gonna make more sense to you. You're not gonna get as frustrated. So make sure it's real wood, not laminate. Don't be shy. Pick your color. So again, Annie Sloan makes lots of different colors. Um, my advice to you is do not, yes, you might look, red might be your favorite color. Yes, it's a gorgeous red. Purple may be your favorite color. Yes, it's a very, Henrietta, she has the cutest names. Um, might be your favorite color, but please don't, my advice is don't use those. Initially, I would pick a, a cream or a blue or something very neutral because it won't stand out so much in your in your home. You'll be able to put it in any room in your house. You'll, be, you'll just be, it'll be a little more versatile than if you use a darker color. Um, and then gradually you can use a bold color if you want to. Um, so the next step is to find a stockist, buy your paint. I keep my cans upside down initially to let the sediments go to the top. Uh, and then you shake it just like a can of paint. You crack it open and um, you paint. And I'll, again, I'll show, you, I'll show you all the steps. But you want to let it dry. I know a lot of people have a, a lot of different um, Te techniques that they use. I personally like to let mine dry at least 12 hours because I find if I do a second coat, uh, the coverage, I don't get the kind of coverage that I want, so let it dry completely. And the step four, which I'll show you over here, is to let your, let, distress your piece, which basically means um, you're gonna steel wool your piece, you're gonna sand your piece, and you're going to dark wax your piece. That's what I mean by distressing. And again, I'll go over that in a second. Um, you want to clear wax, it's part of the process. Um, this is kind of the ma a matte finish. This is just with the chalk paint on it. So it has two coats of chalk paint on it. Um, and it's, as you can see, it's very matte. This clear wax, which is very candle, it's like a candle wax. Um, you, when you apply that and you let it dry and then you buff it, it's gonna give a little bit of a sheen to it. I don't know if you can quite tell in this piece, but it's a little bit smoother. Uh, it's gonna take away that kind of chalky um, texture and it's gonna leave it uh, just a little sheen. And, and you want that because I think this looks a little bit dull to me. But certainly, if that's what you like, you can do that too. There's no, no rules. And the last step is the dark wax, which I know people are really scared about. Actually, on my and on YouTube, on my tutorials, I have like 10,000 hits on just the dark wax process. I think people are scared of it because it's really the place that you can play and make the piece your own. Um, don't be scared because if you mess up the whole darn thing, you can paint it with your chalk. You can start back over here and paint, paint the piece again. But I'll show you. I'll show you what I mean by by that. You will need your steel wool, your fine steel wool, to rub it off. What can you paint? Anything. You can paint metal. You can paint wood. Obviously, if you can paint laminate, that's fine. You will just be aware that when you go to sand your laminate, that laminate is going to come through. You're not going to see a beautiful wood. 
and you can paint other people's pieces if they let you. Uh, here are just some of the colors that I really like. This is Paris Gray, which is actually what I'm doing the giveaway for. It's my favorite color. It's the one that I'm going to do this piece with. I'm going to show you. This is the Country Gray, which is really versatile. I have a lot of clients ask for this color for bedrooms and kids' rooms. and. Um, uh, I had one client, I, I think I did maybe 15 pieces in the same color. She loved it so much. Um, Province, I know you can't quite tell the colors on the screen. It's a bright um, egg blue. Ah, no, that's duck egg blue. But it's a little bit stronger than that. Um, old white is a great color. I would caution you about old white because once you start this, the waxing process, you're going to really see the distress come through on a white piece. You won't see it as much on, say, a Paris gray or French linen piece, but if you do white, obviously it's a light color and you're going you're gonna to see the sanding that, um, you're going to see all the distressing and the sanding and the waxing that you do much more prominently. This is the French linen. It's a great, like, uh, dining room, living room color. Um, this is heavily waxed, so this is kind of like the difference of what you, the kind of what you can get, the effect that you can get. This is not waxed with a, a dark wax as much. And it, once again, that's um, that has a lot more dark wax on it, as you can see, and that's a little more clean. Uh, again, it's whatever you like. Here are some more pieces that I did in the Paris gray. This is in the country gray. I love doing a console in country gray. You can go to any room you have. It's a TV, a TV. Uh, put your TV on it. Put your, you know, use it as a serving piece in your dining room. Um, here's the French linen again. Uh, it's just a really versatile color. Again, you can see I always gravitate towards the, the neutrals and the blues. I wish you could see this a little more clearly. This is the inside of a secretary, uh, and it's done with duck egg blue. I love taking an old secretary and doing the interior a different color. Um, it's like, surprise, a pretty inside. Um, and it also, chalk paint is really cool with the detail. Any piece that has detail, that's what I look for, because uh, that chalk paint is really gonna do neat things for you. Um, here's some before and after. I used to be in marketing and my boss would always do before and afters because I think they make it, it's really cool to see. So I used to work for architecture firms. We always had before and after. So here's an old shabby um, nightstand and here they are in the Paris Gray. This is actually, uh, I really wanted a church pew in my house. Don't ask me why. I thought it was. I thought it would be really cool, and it's also my bench. This is actually from the um, from the uh, Alexandria Methodist Church, and here it is in, in the French linen in my dining room. Here's the before and after of that piece you see there, and now I'm going to do the demo. So thanks for bearing with me. I normally don't talk this much. I do a lot more yelling because I have three little kids, but talking not so much. So my dad was kind enough to <laughs> to shake this can of paint for me. This is a very important tool, and I lose it all the time. If you don't have this, obviously use a screwdriver, but you're just going to open your can of chalk paint that you found from your stockist, uh, open all the sides, and it's completely shaken. Dad looks great. Thanks. Um, you're going to take your Annie Sloan chalk paint brush. Again, don't feel like you have to if you're starting out. Actually, I will probably end up using my little uh, Home Depot thing a little later on. But take your, um, yes, I use this often. Take your, uh, your paint brush, um, dip it in, and it's very much the same as painting anything. You're just going to do broad strokes. I always think it's funny when you watch like HGTV and people are always dressed nicely and you're like, how do they do that? How do they do that? <laughs> you know what I mean, Liz? Anyway, um, you'll notice that I took the hardware off this piece and my rule of thumb for that is that if it's cool hardware, I take it off and at the end of when I'm done with the piece, I'll put it back on. Um, this piece actually did have cool hardware. I really liked it. 
but some pieces that you have might have that brassy gold or something a little bit um, that makes the piece look dated and will take away from the look of your chalk painted piece. Just paint over it. You can see with um, those two pieces down there, I painted over it and I still really like the look. You'll see a lot of chalk painters just paint over it too. It doesn't detract from the piece. Um, if you see Annie Sloan use her chalk paint, she'll actually uh, do kind of a crisscross pattern. Um, go for it. There's no real rules when you're painting it. I kind of tend to go just back and forth because um, people that I do do projects for, they like a little bit of a cleaner look. If you do kind of that X pattern that I was showing you, it's going to give a little more texture to it. And to be totally honest, I probably wouldn't do that until you're really used to the texture of the paint and working with the paint. Again, you want to get all you want to get all the, the little spaces, but please don't feel like you have to get in every single um, every single ridge because it's not going to matter. That's actually going to be a places where you can see where it'll look a little, a little bit more distressed. As you can see, this piece right here is not getting like you can still see part of the wood coming through. So after I let this piece dry for about at least 10 hours, sorry if my back is toward you. Um, I just want to get this little part because I think you'll think it's cool. Um, let it dry for at least 10 hours and then go back and do a second coat if that's what you want to do. Again, there are no rules, but um, if you want a little more coverage, if you don't really like seeing the wood come through, then, um, then go ahead, let it dry and do another coat. You can see that I'm not going to go through all these little cool ridges because I like that look. It's going to be a very antique, distressed, vintage kind of look. That's the point of doing shop paint. Don't feel like you, you don't want to look, make it look like you just bought it from Pottery Barn, had it dipped in paint, and there it was. That's going to seem like a very mass-produced piece of furniture. You want it to have some uniqueness to it. So I like that. I'm going to leave that. Um, you get the idea. I'm not going to sit up here and paint the rest of this. But again, um, if you're not quite sure about that, uh, then you want a little more coverage, just go over it again. So, the next step to the process over here is um, the waxing process. This doesn't go here. This one. The waxing process. So, like, again, this is called the clear wax. If you're going to bother doing Annie Sloan, you really should do every single part of the process. Um, this, let's see, this is about $30 a can. No, it's not cheap, but it's going to be worth it to make your piece something that you want to put in your home for forever and ever. So, this is the clear wax. It's just a candle wax. Uh, it's a little bit softer. Um, and I've, I've learned at the luggage show that if you leave it out in the blazing sun for a good 12 hours, it does melt. <laughs> so, um, see, I say that, but I also know that Annie Sloan actually did uh, painted the exterior of a retail shop in Chicago. So maybe she has a shady part of the street. This is my tea mug that I always bring out with me when I'm painting, and I listen to NPR. Anyway, okay, so you take your brush, um, and you can just hold it with a fist. Please do not go ginger, be ginger, gingerly, whatever. Don't put this on gingerly, because there's no, there's no point. You're going to do a really heavy, thick spread of this. Actually, no. Sorry. You can do the clear wax first, but since I only brought three pieces, I'm going to do the sanding first. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Don't get confused. Take your 3M, which is the product, not the size. And you're gonna sand your piece. And I really like going over. The, I really like going over the edges. This is actually 100 grade sandpaper. Um, you can go a little heavier. That's fine. If you go a little lighter, it's gonna get real frustrating because you have to use a lot of arm muscle. And the point of sanding is that you want it to look like it's naturally been worn there. 
um, like an antique piece of furniture. You want to make you want to make it seem like someone brushed up against it for years and years and years. So sand the corners really well on the top. I really like to get that corner real good. And again, since I'm using real wood, um, you can kind of see the wood coming through. And I like that. And the reason I decided to do a spindle piece of furniture, this is my favorite part. I love that because that's really going to show the wear. And I'm going to do that everywhere on the piece. Um, again, don't be shy, but also, um, don't be shy, but don't go bananas either. You want to. You don't want to take off all your paint. Again, you want to do the ridges. You want to do things that stick out. Certainly when I get ready to sand this, I want to do all the places that have those little crevices in it. Um, you kind of get the idea. Sanding. Uh, then you're going to take your dry brush and you're going to clean off all that dust. Everywhere. Make sure you clean it really well. If you don't, you will put the dark clear wax on and you'll see little particles everywhere. And you'll be really upset because you've gone into this stage and all of a sudden you have particles everywhere. So make sure you really dust it. Again, with a dry brush, don't use a brush that you've been using for painting, really. And the bigger the better, I think. So, back to this. Um, the reason that I started with, you, you could actually do it either way. You can do the clear wax first, that's fine. Um, I like doing the sanding first because it's one step I can get out of the way. So do your sanding first. Then you're gonna take that and you're gonna liberally put your wax all over your piece. And you're gonna let it clump. You see it's gonna clump in these crevices. You're gonna let it clump, you're not gonna worry about it. You're gonna keep going all over. You're gonna see particles. You're going to see it clump up everywhere and you're going to do the whole thing. You're not, and you will notice on top, and I'll show you, make a little bit more room. You will notice on top that the color, the color gets deeper and it adds a little more intensity to the color, um, which I like. I'll show you what happens on the top. So you can kind of see the color difference. And I'm just gonna, and you'll be able to see when you put that clear wax on, you'll see the spots that you don't get. So make sure you go over it really well. And just keep going over the entire piece. Don't be shy. So you get the point. Um, you really don't need to let this dry. Once you've covered your entire piece, you want to take your cheesecloth, your rag, whatever it is, and you're really going to put some power behind it, and you're going to buff your entire piece. You're going to take off all that excess wax and buff it until it's really clean, and eventually you will start to see a sheen to it. Um, you want to let this dry at least overnight. I mean, really, because it's, um, it is wax. If I touch this, it's, it's coming off of my hands. So let this really cure, let it really dry. You can always go back the next day if, you've, um, if some wax has gotten in places that you really don't want it to. You can go back through. And you can see that uh, the wood is deepened in color as well. Um, again, another reason why it's really important to do natural wood. If you have laminate there, it's not going to look as it's not going to look as finished or polished. Um, and then the last step to the process is the dark wax. Dun, dun, dun. And people, again, people are scared of this because this is what it looks like. This is actually a used can. It's really dark and it's really waxy. It's actually the texture of mascara is what I would compare it to. Um, this can I've had for maybe three months. I 
that used it on a lot of pieces, it'll, it'll last you a long time. The clear wax in this stage of the process, you probably can get like three or four pieces done with it. Um, it's gonna go faster because you need more coverage with your clear wax. But when you get ready to do your dark wax, again, you can use a rag for it. If I was to use a rag, I would dip my rag into my mascara and I would apply it. You're just not gonna have quite the control that you would with a brush. So that's what I'm gonna hold in my right hand is my little wax brush. And in my, li my, my little left hand, I'm gonna hold my fine steel wool. Again, if you use harsh steel wool, you will brush it and it will scratch your paint and you will not be happy. So get the finest steel water. I'm gonna hold this in this hand. So I'm gonna dip it. I'm gonna brush it on the side. It gets cakey, so um, that's why you're holding this. Basically, so you can brush off the excess. So you're gonna go along your lines. And if you can see what's happening, which I hope you can, it's kind of gonna give it that antique aging. You see how it's aging it a little bit? Um, I always go on the edges of the piece. I go over where I've sanded. I go over, again, the edges. I hope you can see kind of what's happening here. Um, I go over the, if there's any kind of relief, not relief detail or whatever it may be. Sorry, my back's turned to you. Um, again, go over the edges. I do want to point something out. This is a light color. This is the old white. And so when you do wood pieces in a light color, is that many times up? <laughs> um, what's that? Oh, okay. So I'm opening the door. Okay. Um, this is a light painted piece. So you're going to see little um, blemishes in the wood. And if I was using a darker color, I wouldn't see those blemishes. If I was using the French linen, which is darker gray, but since I've used the old white, I do see them. So if I don't wanna, if I don't have time to stand those out, if I haven't noticed it until, oh my gosh, I've done this entire piece and now here's a, you know, I honestly don't really mind that. But if you really hate it, then use a bit more.